Maybe you remember last year when I purchased the newer NW800 condenser microphone for a review, and this gold microphone quickly became the gold standard for terrible sounding microphones. <laughs> if you have this microphone and it works for you and you love it and it's sounding great, that's awesome. You should enjoy it. It's a good price. For me, mine definitely does not sound great. As I've said in a few other videos, I think that the quality control is just all over the place with these because some people do have some that I've heard sound pretty decent. Mine just straight up doesn't. Now in that original video, I got a lot of recommendations saying, hey, the NW800 is okay, but the NW700, that's where the good sound is. So I went ahead and ordered the NW700 and I don't know if this is a precursor for what to expect, but this is exactly how it was delivered, as in just this package opened with no tape or anything like that. So this is just how the guy handed it to me. Now the price of these microphones fluctuates quite a bit. So sometimes the NW700 is more expensive and sometimes the NW800 is more expensive. I was able to purchase the NW700 for about $20, but check the link in the description to see what the price is today in your region because they do fluctuate all the time. But if you remember my video on the 800 or if you watch that unboxing, this just comes in a nondescript cardboard box and it just says NW800 microphone on it. They don't really make a big deal about it being a condenser microphone. Other than that, it is listed a little bit on the box, kind of small, and it is listed on the product description sales page as a condenser microphone. The NW700, on the other hand, comes in a box with these very sweet early 2000s era graphics, and it's got some nice Terminator 2 word art to tell you that it is specifically a condenser microphone. And the reason, the condensed reason why that matters is if you saw my video on the Rode NT1 condenser, you know that I tore this one apart. Literally, I actually took the NW800 apart to show that the capsule in here, while it is a condenser capsule, it's an electret condenser capsule. So it's not the same thing that you're gonna find in something like the Rode NT1, the Sennheiser MK4, or any other higher quality condenser microphone. Technically it is a condenser, but it's not really what you're thinking of when you're thinking, hey, condenser microphone, condenser microphone. Mm, it's not really the same thing. It's kind of like how a golf cart and a Ferrari are both vehicles. Now the reason I bring that up is because now the reason I bring that up is because the NW700 is very much claiming to be a condenser microphone. So let's see if it sounds a little bit different and then let's take it apart and see if it's actually constructed differently than the NW800. These microphones come in a lot of different configurations and kits at different price points. But in both cases, I bought the basic one that comes with the microphone, a cable and a little shock mount. So let's see, in here we have customer service, nice all the info about pickup patterns and frequency response and all that stuff. And it does mention that you need phantom power because it is a condenser microphone. We get a cable, this is an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable, not an unhelpful cable to have. However, please don't think that you can plug this directly into your computer. You do need some sort of interface or mixer. In this case, I'll be using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is a very common interface. Normally I use the Rodecaster Pro, but sometimes I get a lot of questions saying, hey, is the Rodecaster really not coloring the signal at all? Is the Rodecaster adding in any equalization? So for today, just to be clear, both microphones are gonna be running through the Focusrite Scarlett into Adobe Audition with no effects, no processing, nothing like that at all. So we're not gonna use this, this cable, we're gonna use regular XLR cables. You get a foam windscreen. This is actually a higher quality one than the one that comes with the Shure MV7. You get a shock mount and these are shockingly nice little shock mounts. It's the exact same one that comes with the NW700. You just open these little clamps right here, slide the microphone right in. The microphones themselves don't have any mounts built into them. So you do need a shock mount or a clamp or something. And then there is this little 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter in the shock mount. What do they say about making new friends but keep the old, one is silver, the other is gold? There we go. Here's the NW700. It's a sharp looking microphone. Overall, actually the build quality is very similar to the NW800. If I had to lean towards one or the other, I would actually say this feels a little more solid and durable. While it's still very plasticky, like this looks like it's metal, but it's, it's just painted plastic or it's at least very, very thin metal. But the bodies, the housing, the connector, is all basically the same. The only difference is up here at the top where the capsules are. And on these microphones, both of these 
are side address microphones. So that means you speak into the front of them, as is the case with most condensers. Don't speak into the top, don't set someone behind it, speak into the front. In this case, the front is the side with the newer logo on it. And there we go, and then you can position it where you need it. For today's test, I'm gonna be running the NW700 through the blue XLR cable. It's also the silver microphones, so they look pretty different. Right into channel one on the Scarlett, and I'll be running the NW800 through the red cable into channel two on the Scarlett. I do get a lot of questions about these colored XLR cables. The brand is Dreamake on Amazon. There's links in the description. They're pretty good, they're super affordable, they look great on camera. They're not the highest quality cables, meaning they can be prone to interference, and I did have one of them fail on me, so it depends on how vain you wanna be. I want a cool looking cable, or do you want you know, the best quality cable, but I like these, they're cheap, I just buy a bunch of them. So now I've got both microphones connected to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, and I've got phantom power turned on. I'm seeing a signal in Adobe Audition, no effects, no processing, nothing like that. And let's switch over to the newer NW700. You're currently listening to the Rode VideoMic NTG, which is placed on a boom out of frame. And now this is the NW700. To be totally honest, I'm really impressed with how this microphone sounds, especially compared to the NW800, which when I turned this on for the first time, I was blown away by how how bad it sounds and we'll look at that in just a second so as you can see over here i'm really about a fist distance away from the microphone this is pretty much how i would use it if i were doing something like a podcast or something like that of course if you're worried about plosives you could always position the microphone slightly off axis as long as it's still pointed at your mouth then all the breath pa 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 will go past the microphone and it's still going to pick you up pretty clearly. So this could be a cool setup for streaming or just being a little more conversational with someone. Of course, you could also mount this on a boom arm or something like that. And of course, it does come with this windscreen. So if we do plosives, pa pa pa, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. I don't know how much difference the pop filter actually made other than making the microphone not look quite as nice on camera. Pa pa pa, pa pa pa. It definitely does reduce the plosives a bit, but I think it's more effective to just position the microphone at an angle. Pa, 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 pa. I think that's the better pop filter. And then you get the aesthetic appeal of the microphone because it's a great looking mic. Sometimes I get made fun of for caring about how microphones look. And obviously the sound quality is the most important thing when it comes to a microphone. But in a world where a lot of people are doing video podcasts and streaming and stuff like that, your microphone is a visual part of your appearance, your brand, whatever you want to call it, and having a nice looking microphone is definitely not a bad thing. So this, this sounds pretty darn good. So this is the NW700 and this is the NW800. And the gain on both mics through the focus right is right at about the 12 o'clock position. Now what I don't want to say is that there's absolutely no use for the NW800 if you're doing something where you need an old timey radio announcer voice like, our boys are going into war and they're going to defeat the enemy. This could be a, a perfect microphone for that. But if you want something that's going to make people not want to just tear their earbuds out or stop listening to your show, the NW700 has a significantly more pleasing sound and just a, a better more well-rounded sound overall. So if you have to choose between these two microphones and you're on a budget, honestly, I was expecting to just have another microphone to kind of make fun of, but I think this is actually a viable option, especially if you are, again, on a budget. Now, since the NW700 does sound good, I'm gonna put a wild card into the mix. So let's look at the Rode NT1. This is probably just about the least expensive, legit, high quality, condenser microphone. If you haven't seen my full review on this, definitely go check that out. This usually retails for somewhere between $250, $260, again, depending on what kind of kit you get with it. It's totally different construction. It's in a league of its own. But in terms of sound, this is the NW700, and this is the Rode NT1. Again, none of these microphones have any effects or anything like that. I definitely, listening between the two of these, I think the Rode has a much more pleasing sound overall. This is quickly becoming one of my all-time favorite microphones. It's so, so good. However, for the price, this microphone, the NW700, basically costs the sales tax of, if you're in the United States at least, the sales tax of the NT1. Then I think that is a pretty darn good deal. So if I 
leave the gain at 12 o'clock and put the microphone, I mean, this is 18 inches or so away from me. This is what it sounds like. If I increase the gain a little bit, you can definitely hear, as is the case with many condenser microphones, it's gonna pick up more of the reverb in the room, more of the room tone, but I could probably turn this to maybe like two o'clock and then sit fairly comfortably kind of far away from it and, and get a pretty decent sound. If I put it back to 12 o'clock and I sort of stay within the six to 12 inch range of the microphone, I think I'm getting a pretty usable sound. And again, this is with absolutely no EQ or anything. This is just straight out of the package. Let's talk about directionality here. Since this is a front address microphone, it will pick up if you're a little bit off axis. So if I'm turning the microphone, my voice isn't changing too, too much right here, but as soon as I go to, you know, past 180 degrees, it's not really picking me up at all. And if I try to talk into the back of the microphone, it sounds weird. And if you're the person who tries to talk into the top of the microphone, that um, it just, it's gonna sound very, very strange. So if you use the microphone as intended and you speak into the front of it, the front side of it, where the label is, it's gonna sound pretty darn good. Now, while I am actually pretty impressed with the sound of this microphone, especially for the price, I did just take it out of the box today, so I don't know what that means one year, two year, five years from now, where like the Rode NT1 comes with a 10 year warranty. They stand behind that microphone. It's not going anywhere. I'm not sure that that would be the case with this one. If you've been using the NW700 for a significant chunk of time and you have a good or a bad experience with it, definitely let us all know in the comments so that way you can add in that long-term review. But just straight out of the package, especially for the price, this sounds this sounds great. I think it's, it's, a, it's great. Now I wanna put this mic through the same treatment that I put the NW800 through. So let's switch back to the NT1 for a second while I, while I take this one apart. Now, if you remember the video where I took the NW800 apart, they come apart pretty easily. No, I'm definitely not recommending that you take your microphone apart, but I'll do it so you don't have to take yours apart and we'll see what the difference is inside of these things. So this is the NW800. There's just two screws on either side and then the mic itself comes out and you can see just like last time in the previous video, you can see the electric condenser capsule there. It's very flimsy, it's very plasticky, it's very just, it's very cheap. So this is the actual microphone you're getting. Not really anything impressive. And we heard how it sounds. Am I just going to shock myself? No, here we go. Here's my electric condenser microphone. Uh, it sounds pretty terrible. So let's then compare that build to the NW700. I almost feel bad about this because this is a nicer, more usable microphone but the, the parts are identical. The function of the parts is the same, but this is the NW800, this is the 700. They are actually slightly different shapes and slightly different builds. The body tube housing thing is exactly the same, just with different logo printed on it. The circuit boards are significantly different, actually. I wasn't really expecting to see this much of a difference. So the NW700 circuit board looks like this. I don't know what it means, but the NW800 looks like this. And if we flip them over and look at the other side, the NW800 has nothing on it, whereas the NW700 has these two capacitors, which I believe are what's required for it to use phantom power. So it's just sort of different. The NW800 has two capacitors on the front. This has them on the back. It's definitely not the same microphone, just in a different housing. Now, the most important thing though, let's see what the capsule looks like on the NW700 and it just slides out. Oh boy, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. It's the same, but different. Interesting. So it's still, again, I'm not an electrical pro guy. It still to me actually looks like an electric condenser microphone. The capsule that's in this NT1, aside from being a circular shape, looks nothing like these but they're different, they're different colors. And if you look at the back of these capsules, you can actually see that they are, they're clearly just different. They're constructed different. They have different wires, different inputs. So I guess even if this one is an electric condenser or a super cheap condenser, it is of a higher quality than the NW800. Now, why we've got this microphone apart, I do wanna point out that the documentation that came with it does say that it features a high quality back electric condenser, which means it's not trying to say that it is anything other than an electric condenser microphone. However, still important to note that none of the sales pages that I found online list this as an electric condenser. They all list it as a condenser microphone. Just thought that was important to clarify. 
So let's see if I can put this back together and get it working again. Hey, hello. Hey, it still works. Yay, <laughs> I didn't break it. I know I didn't do anything to it, but at least I didn't break it. So here's kind of where I land on the NW700. I don't know that I'd wanna actually land on it because it is mostly made out of plastic and I would probably break it, but philosophically where I land on it is that it's actually a very usable microphone for the money. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're choosing between both of these, you just search for you know inexpensive microphones online and these two pop up, definitely go for the NW700. There's no way I can recommend the NW800 unless you just like, you know, causing yourself pain or you want something that sounds bad on purpose for some reason, or maybe you just want it as a prop or a set decoration and you like the gold look. Definitely, it's great. If you actually need the sound from it, not so much. This, very, very usable and you could EQ it to suit your voice a little bit better. Now, when it comes to any kind of gear, I would never want to make anyone feel like the stuff they make is not good because they're using a certain piece of gear or because it's not at a certain price point. If you use something, no matter what it is, and it works for you and it delivers good results, then it is good. What I like to do though is help people find the most effective use of their money and their energy and their time. And so if you're on an extremely limited budget, but you just want to have a better microphone than something that's built in and you maybe want to start a podcast, do a little bit of streaming, this is definitely a great choice. Now you do need an interface of some kind to run it through. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that I'm using right now is many times the cost of this microphone. The Focusrite Scarlett Soul, a lot of interfaces sell for about $80 to $100, so you're probably going to spend more money on an interface than the actual microphone, but at least you can always keep your interface and then potentially upgrade your microphone in the future. But what I think you want to avoid doing is upgrading to another $30 microphone and then a $40 microphone and then a $30 microphone. Eventually, you're gonna end up spending hundreds of dollars on cheap microphones that never quite get you what you want when it might be worth it to just save up a little more and get a high quality option from the start if that's possible. But I'm happy that the NW700 sounds very usable and very, very decent. I was going to feel bad if it was just, hey, it's time for me to rip on newer again. So this one, definitely the way to go. This one, definitely the not the way to go. Bye. Now, if you're still not sure which microphone you wanna go with, I do have an entire playlist of microphone reviews and comparisons. So if you like the side-by-side -side comparison, definitely check that out and you might find the exact right microphone for you.